life is important to my children. His rights are important. But who's going to stop him from doing anything to me? I'm not protected. I have to live here, live here, live there. This has nothing to do with his custody case. This is about me feeling like I can feel safe. I don't have to come home and look over my shoulder and say, is he behind me? Is he on my doorstep? This man beat me for years, and the only reason I didn't have him arrested is because the children's mother was not able to take care of them. So where would they wind up? This man had PTSD. He was also diagnosed with borderline schizophrenia. Yeah, people admit that to the courts. You know, so with unchecked PTSD, I'm solely responsible in his mind for him losing his kids. And I'm not so responsible if he didn't lose them based on my testimony. He did not. And then on February 28th of this year, just last month, you did you testify in the circuit court appeal of, of the yes. custody case? And was your testimony consistent with uh, what it was in the juvenile court? It was the exact same thing as it was in the juvenile court. I didn't add nothing. I didn't take it away. I wasn't sensational. I just told them the honest to God truth. This man was beating my behind. I have permanent nerve damage from the beating where he shipped my vertebrae. And as you left the witness stand on February 28, 2019, and you walked out of that courtroom, what, if anything, did you observe? When I walked out, I just looked up, and he just did it like this. And his eyes were bloodshot red with that murderous look that he gets when he was beating me. I, I, his eyes, he just looked over to the side like that. Do you, since that date, um, or since the uh, appeal in the circuit court, do you see the children at issue in that custody case either on a regular basis or in treatment? On occasion. I don't I don't see them that much as I used to because I am I don't want to get it to where I am, but I don't see them as much as I used to see them because I'm not in the area all the time anymore. I but do you have a relationship with the children's mother? So I have to have a relationship with her to have a relationship with the children. These are my stepchildren. I'll raise them until they were babies. So is it your intent to continue to maintain a relationship with those children? When they're, when they're in their mother's care, yeah. In their, in their the mother's care? She has full two So given that you'll be interacting with her and the children, can you tell the court what the concerns for safety, uh, your safety, do you have in light of that and the other? Well, first of all, I am concerned for my safety because he blames me for losing the children and because I know what he's capable of doing. And I'm a Marine. He's military. I know what PTSD is, and it goes unchecked and untreated. Your Honor, I'm going to object to any expert testimony or any approaching on expert testimony about PTSD and any of these effects in this case. Judge, I, uh, I don't think she's trying to give expert testimony other than her experience with PTSD in the military when she's observed. I don't think she's doing any expert testimony. I think she's testifying that he has PTSD. Well, he, he did state in the first video I played that he's been diagnosed with PTSD. So he's, it's a party admission. He's got it. She knows he's got it. And she's concerned. And I just want her to tell the court what concerns she has. And she said, well, he's got PTSD. That's one of the concerns. I'll overrule the objection. He did state he did have PTSD. As I said before, I know he's got the PTSD, severe PTSD. I've seen him when he feels like he's been wrong. And also, I don't know if I can say this, he said he's sitting there, he can be honest. He has attempted suicide before. So what's this teeth the reason I stayed if they had what's the teeth of a criminal kid killing himself and killing me? That's why I say well, if he feels like his back's against the wall, what's to keep him from killing me? Your Honor, again, I would object to what he did suicidal ideation, all of these things. 
it's pure speculation. It's not appropriate. It's her personal knowledge based upon his own admission. Right. I'm going to sustain that objection. And, um, you're asking the court, based upon your concerns and, and the totality of the uh, circumstances and, and what you testified about here today, for a protective order, and you're asking for a two-year protective order that he have no contact with you, correct? I'm asking that he doesn't do anything to me, and I know the court cannot prevent that. I'm not here to get a protective order because it's going to help or hurt him with his custody case. I understand his rights. I'm here because I am afraid of him. I live, I, I'm not going to get it into where I have to live and where I have to work and how I have to inform my HR of what's going on in my life. I'm here and asking the court. I understand his right. This is not about his custody case. I'm just saying, consider my children. If something happens to me, I, I'm not trying to go against the court's rights or anything. I'm just saying, protect me. I have been to the manager's office a million times. I didn't even know anything about a protective order until this last month. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. I was ignorant living in his house. I'm just saying, protect me. Because when I come to court in June or July, it's, they're just going to keep repeating me. I have to keep coming to court. And then I, I, I'm just confused all over again. I don't even want to go to court and testify because I'm not protected. This has got nothing to do with the custody case. This is about protecting me. I, I'm, I'm just like distressed. I'm not even able to do my job effectively. And I don't have the kind of job where... I'm stressed out all the time just because I never know when is he going to snap. And I'm not trying to scare him out, but the mental illness is real. And his attempted suicide is real, not based on what he told me to have a copy of his medical records. We need to object to speculation. I think she's answered my question about her fears, Judge. That's what I wanted to hear. I have no further questions. Objection sustained. Cross examination. Yes. Ms. Thomas, uh, may I hand this up to have her take a look at this? I'm going to object. Uh, this is a police narrative. He, he's indicated he's going to ask to refresh her recollection, but I think she has to show some indication that she has a problem with her recollection first before he uses something to refresh it. Yeah, you, you, the counsel's <laughs> absolutely right. Let me ask the question first. Um, Ms. Thomas, good afternoon. A few moments ago, you testified that you didn't know anything about protective orders until just recently. Is that correct? I, I didn't know how to file a protective order. I tried to get one before, but they said he has to be gone for 72 hours and he could come back. All right, so it's your testimony that you didn't know anything about protective orders. No, I didn't know how to recently. get one. You didn't know how to get one? I didn't know how to file one. I've been to the manager's office. They should have documented every time I went. I called the police. They have left me a voicemail message. I still have on my phone. I didn't know what to do. This is not my life. I don't live my life. And get and be beat up. People never have this happen. When did you learn about the protective order process? Because a moment ago you testified, didn't you, that you just recently learned about it? How did how to actually go through the process? And I went through the process. I contacted. Um, I when, went to the manager's office. Can you answer my question, night. please? Yeah. I don't remember the date. I went to the manager's office. He told me to go to this building right here tomorrow. Be there before nine o'clock in the morning. If, if, if okay. you could, when he says when, just oh, give him an approximation of when. I don't know. The, the date on the protective order was the night before. I went to the manager's office in Woodbridge. Oh, would that be this year? He, uh, yeah, he told me to go. He told me, gave me a sheet of paper and said, go here. Okay, so did that just answer your Oh, point? I'm sorry. I, the, the night before the protective order, I don't know the exact date. Okay. So you only learned about the protective order process this year, February. How did you want? Okay. Ma'am, could you please now look at the document that was handed up to you? I believe it's third to last paragraph down the page. Does this reflect your recollection about whether or not the Prince William County Police Officer ever informed you about this protective order process in 2019? Yes, they've told me many times I could get one, but he could only be put up for 72 hours. 